Welcome back to our channel guys. So this is the part 1 of the nature and effects of obligations. Be, uh, be sure to subscribe to our channel to alert you on the release of upcoming videos. So here are the contents of this video. So number 1, uh, types of obligations according to its prestation. Number 2, obligations of the debtor and the rights of creditors. Number 3, different types of breaches in obligations. Number 4, concept of fortuitous event. Number 5, types of damages. And number 6, presumptions. So for the first part of the video, we or for the first part or part 1 of video, we have the first three contents which are the types, uh, the obligations and rights, and uh, lastly the different types of breaches in obligations. And for the second video, um, we have the concept of fortuitous events, the types of damages, and uh, presumptions. Okay, so, so simulan na po natin. So, number one, types of obligations according to its prestation. So, in here, we ano, categorize the uh, obligations into two. So, we have real obligations and personal obligations. So, ang tanging pagkakaiba lang po nila is simply lang, pag sinabi nating real obligations, obligation uh, to give po yan. Pag sinabi din naman nating personal obligations, obligation to do or not to do. So, furthermore, kinakategorize pa natin ang real obligations into two, which is... Uh, Real obligations to give a specific thing and pangalawa is the real obligation to give generic thing. Pero ano nga bang pagkakaiba ng dalawa to? So maya maya sasabihin natin. So personal obligations naman, positive or obligation to do and negative naman ay obligation not to do. Okay, so umpisan po natin sa, mga, sa pagbibigay ng mga different examples. So number one, real obligation which is obligation to give a specific thing. So ano nga ba? ang pagkakaiba ng specific thing at generic thing. So, pag sinabi nating specific thing, it is particularly designated or physically segregated, unlike generic thing. So, kung makikita nyo sa example, so, meron tayong tigda dalawang example. So, number one, so, sa real obligation specific thing muna tayo. So, Nick bound himself to deliver to you his only dog tomorrow. Okay, so, um, so, pakit natin nasabing uh, specific thing yung dog, Okay, so kunin ko lang yung highlighter ko. So bakit natin nasabi na specific thing yung dog? Okay? Dahil okay, sa word na only dog. Ibig sabihin, nag-iisa yung dog na yan. Okay? Ibig sabihin, ang tinutukoy ni Nick na i-deliver niya sa iyo tomorrow is a specific dog. Okay? Ibig sabihin, nag-iisa lang siya sa mundo, yung dog lang na yon, yung only dog niya lang na yon. Na kapag nawala yun, ibig sabihin wala na yung specific dog na tinutukoy niyang yun. Okay? So, yung word na only, indicator po siya na yung dog ay isang specific thing. So, ang pagkakaiba, um, magiging generic lang ito kapag nireplace, uh, 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 nireconstruct natin yung sentence into like this. Nick bound himself to deliver to you a dog tomorrow. So, pag sinabi natin a dog, ibig sabihin pwede siyang mag-deliver ng kahit anong dog. Okay, pero pag sinabi nating only dog, ibig sabihin, ang tinutukoy niya lang doon is yung nag-iisa niyang aso at that moment, nung sinabi niya yung obligation na yun. Okay? So, sa second example naman natin, Jonathan obliged himself to give you as a Christmas gift or Christmas gift. So, Christmas gift, his car with plate number ABC123. Okay, so bakit natin nasabi na yung car, although wala yung word na only this time, so, ibig sabihin, hindi natin masasabi na only car niya yan. Okay? Pero anong naging or ano yung word na nag-indicate na ito ay isang specific car? Okay? Ang word na yon ay yung or words na yon ay yung plate number ABC123. Okay? So sa pagkakaalam naman natin, ah uh, ang plate number, syempre unique yan. So syempre medyo nakapaglagay lang tayo dito ng ano, medyo wala na tayong maiisip. ABC123. So ang plate number, it specifically Okay, specifically um, uh, designate the car as a specific car. Okay, so yan yung ano, kumbaga word na nagpapa-specific dyan sa car na yan. Okay, uh, kapag nirephrase natin yan into Jonathan obliged himself to give you as a Christmas gift a car, so period, uh, ibig sabihin yung car na yun generic. Ibig sabihin pwede siyang magbigay ng kahit anong car. Okay, pero dahil dun sa plate number na yan, naging specific yung car natin. Okay. So, mga examples naman ng real obligation. So, number two, Gary bound himself to give Ricardo 10,000 tomorrow. So, kapag obligation to give money, 
automatically generic po yan. So, ang pagbabayad ng pera, generic po ang pera, tatandaan nyo po yan. Okay? So, sa second example naman, Blake obliged himself to deliver a pig on John's birthday. So, uh, a pig, simply a pig. So, walang problema dyan. Ibig sabihin, kahit anong klasing pig, kahit anong pig, basta pig, makapag-deliver siya, uh, nakapag-comply siya sa kanyang obligation. Okay? So, yun po yung mga different examples ng uh, real obligations, uh, categorized into specific, uh, obligation to give a specific thing and obligation to give a generic thing. So, balikan lang natin yung ano, particularly designated. So, ito, uh, these are actually particularly designated. Okay? So, yung dog, tapos yung car, they are particularly designated. Paano naman yung number 2, yung physically segregated? So, every time na, so, ang example po nyan is, for example, every time na pumupunta ka sa grocery store at bumibili ka ng, let's say, isang instant noodles, the moment na physically segregate mo ang isang noodle at dinala mo siya sa counter meaning uh, that makes that specific thing specific or uh, specific thing or uh, determinate thing yun yung ibang uh, tawag natin sa specific thing determinate thing okay so yun yung physical segregation naman okay so next positive personal obligation or obligation to do so example So, Iruma bound himself to fix Jojo's car the following day. So, that is an obligation to do. Wala kang i-deliver dyan. Uh, mag, uh, kung baga, gagawa ka ng isang servisyo or service. Next naman, Dio obliged himself to wash Jotaro's uniform before before school starts. Okay? So, so same. Same example or same concept. Obligation to do. And lastly, number four, negative personal obligation. Not to do naman ito. So, as, as an example, so, Cars and Wamu agreed not to build any structure on the boundaries of their properties. Okay? So, ayan. So, next example natin. So, obligations of the debtor and rights and remedies of the creditor. So, ito yung summary. Um, yung obligations ng debtor natin, uh, kinategorize natin siya according to the different uh, obligations or the different types of obligations according to their prestation. Doon naman sa rights of the creditor, kinategorize natin siya into two. Principal rights or uh, principal rights slash remedies. Um, and pangalawa naman ay subsidiary rights slash remedies. So, umpisan muna natin sa mga different types or different obligations of the debtor. Um, so, meron tayong apat. So, umpisan natin doon sa number one. Obligation to give a specific thing. Sa obligation, okay, so, ayan, meron muna tayong ano, uh, may kailangan muna tayong linawin. So, don't confuse this with the rights, yung rights of the creditor na tinatawag natin dito, which is kinategorize natin into principal rights and subsidiary rights. So, don't confuse this with the rights of the creditors over a thing, which includes uh, real rights and personal rights. So, to illustrate real right and personal right, okay, unahin muna natin yun. So, rights of creditors over a thing. Okay, so there are two, personal and real rights. Okay, so so first, uh, sa second column natin, nakalagay dyan, enforceable against whom? So, pag personal right po yan, it is enforceable only against a definite or a specific passive subject. Kapag real right naman po yan, it is enforceable against anyone. So, for example, um, merong utang sa'yo, yung kaibigan mo, so meron kang personal right, okay? to uh, to demand payment of the loan okay pag real right naman ang example po niyan is ownership so kapag ikaw ay uh, ikaw ang nagmamay-ari let's say ng isang establishment or ng isang real property yung ownership na yun ay pwede mong enforce against anyone na gustong mag-claim ng lupa sasabihin mo sa akin yan okay so that is an example of real right which is enforceable against anyone So, kailan po na-acquire ang personal right at, at, at ang real right? So, um, ito po ay kinuha mula sa Civil Code Provision which is uh, Article 1164. So, ma-acquire po ang personal right from the time the obligation to deliver arises. While in uh, real right, it is acquired upon delivery. So, as an example, on January 1, 2020, X bound himself to give Y his only dog. This is to be delivered on January 10, 2020. So from the time the obligation uh okay so from January 1, 2020 
um, meron na tayong tinatawag na personal right. So, meron na nga ba? Okay, in this case, um, wala pa. Okay? So, magkakaroon lang ng obligation to deliver pagdating ng January 10, 2020. Kung makapansin nyo kasi, uh, isa lang po itong uh, simpleng uh, unilateral obligation. So, um, unlike contracts, which is yung obligation to deliver niya, mag-aarise upon perfection, uh, this time naman, mag-aarise yung obligation to deliver upon January 10, 2020, which is, yan, yan lang mag-aarise yung obligation to deliver. Or magkakaroon na ng obligation para i-deliver uh, ni X, okay, yung uh, specific dog na yun na, tin, uh, na tinutukoy natin. Okay? Um, yung real right naman, ma-acquire niya, um, syempre, Um, siguro on January 10 if ever diniliver niya man on January 10 tapos actually nakuha niya na okay or actually nakuha na ni Y yung uh, specific dog na yun ibig sabihin it's considered delivered to him uh, he acquires real right at that moment okay pero hanggat hindi pa na deliver sa kanya wala pa siyang real right over the thing okay so yun yung tatandaan niyo po diyan in this case so Um, ito po yung ano civil code provision na pinagbasean po natin yan so article 1164 so number one ah uh, the creditor has a right to the fruits of the thing from the time the obligation to deliver it arises however he shall acquire no real right over it until the same has been delivered to him okay so let's move on so uh, 2.1 so obligations of the debtor so number one unahin mo natin yung obligation to give a specific thing So we have uh, let's uh, five obligations. So obviously letter A to deliver the thing. Isa yun sa obligation. Okay. Letter B naman to take care of the thing before delivery. Okay. So bago mo ma-deliver dahil specific thing siya, kailangan mong alagaan yung specific thing na yun. Dahil kung nawala yun, wala ka nang pwedeng ibang i-deliver dahil ang obligation natin ay isang obligation to deliver a specific thing, hindi po generic thing. Okay? So, based sa Article 1163, ang, okay, in taking care of the thing, we have to follow a certain uh, degree or uh, level of diligence. So, according to 1163, ang e-exercise po nating diligence ay yung tinatawag nating diligence of a good father of a family or uh, the ordinary diligence na tinatawag. Next naman, letter C, to deliver the fruits of the thing. So, for example, dun sa um, example letter A natin, Nick bound himself to deliver to you his only dog. Um, so, kapag if ever may uh, nanganak yung aso, so yung dog na uh, nagkaroon ng mga tuta, um, uh, those ano, tuta, yung mga tuta na yon ay considered fruits. Okay? Fruits of the dog. Pag sinabi natin fruits, hindi siya literal na, na prutas. Okay? So, Kumbaga, ito yung mga um, uh, by virtue of the principal thing, kaya sila nag exist Okay? So, aside from that, another example, for example, may lupa, tapos mayroong mga tumutubong mga halaman. So, considered fruits din yung mga yun. Another example is kapag ano naman, um, meron kang, let's say, apartment. So, ang fruits nun is, let's say, yung mga rent na makukuha natin from the ano the uh, tenants okay so mga fruits po yung mga yun um, so let's go to letter D to deliver the accessions and accessories although they were not mentioned so every time na bumibili tayo let's say ng isang uh, smartphone di ba meron siyang charger meron siyang uh, headset meron siyang uh, kumbaga lahat ng mga ano um necessary para magamit natin yung uh, uh, phone na yon so kailangan i-deliver din or ibigay din nung ano nagbebenta sa atin okay so hindi yun nawawala yung mga charger uh, headset and other ne uh, other necessary components nung phone na yon okay so uh, gusto ko lang i uh, i-emphasize dito yung word na although they were not mentioned okay although they were not mentioned so nandiyan po malinaw na malinaw okay so Article 1166 po yan. And lastly, to pay damages if guilty of fraud, negligence, delay, or contravention of the terms of the obligation. 
Okay, so itong letter E po na obligation ay present po sa lahat ng klase ng obligation, whether it is obligation to deliver a specific thing, obligation to deliver a generic thing, obligation to do, or obligation not to do. So, maya-maya makikita natin. So, next, obligations in obligation to deliver a generic thing. So, medyo nabawasan tayo. So, nawala na yung mga to deliver its fruits, to deliver the accessions, accessories. Wala na rin dyan yung to take care of the thing, which is hindi naman required kasi uh, in the first place, generic naman yung ibibigay natin. Ibig sabihin, if ever nawala yung ibibigay natin or na-damage, ibig sabihin, pwede naman tayong makapag-deliver ng iba pang bagay. So, for example, ang napag-usapan natin ay cellphone na i-deliver. Um, pwede, naman, pwede naman tayong bumili ng... Iba pang cellphone if ever nawala yung supposedly ibibigay natin. Okay? So, uh, number uh, letter A, to deliver the thing. So, yun yung syempre pinaka-obvious na obligation to deliver the thing. Letter B, to bear the expenses of having someone else comply with the obligation. So, this is found in Article 1165, Paragraph 2. So, ang sinasabi lang dito, um, what if hindi... Okay, yung original debtor. So, uh, let's... Uh, Let's take for example yung letter B. Okay, Blake uh, Blake obliged himself to deliver a pig on John's birthday. So, what if uh, si Blake um, naubusan na ng mga baboy? So, um, ano mangyayari? Uh, ang mangyayari dyan is pwedeng yung creditor mag-ask na lang ng iba to comply with Blake's obligation pero uh, ang magbe pa rin ng expenses ay si Blake. Siyempre, yung original debtor pa rin. So, yun yung sinasabi ng letter B. To bear the expenses of having someone else comply with the obligation. So, malinaw na malinaw po yan sa Article 1165, Paragraph 2. Okay, and lastly, yung sinasabi ko, yung hindi nawawala, so, whether kahit anong klaseng obligation yan, uh, uh, in case of uh, fraud, negligence, delay, or contravention of the terms of the obligation, uh, during the performance of the obligation, kapag nangyari dyan, isa sa mga apat na yan, um, meron kang obligation to pay damages. Okay, pero itong mga to, syempre, conditional ito if ever nagkaroon nga ng mga apat na breaches na yan. Okay? So, next. Number three naman, obligations in obligation to do. So, we have five. So, letter A. Uh, obviously, to do the obligation. Once na, ano, um, nag, uh, nag, ano na, nag-demand na yung ano, creditor natin. So, letter B. To bear the expenses of having someone else comply with the obligation. So, just like the uh, obligation to give a generic thing meron din ditong uh, uh, ang tawag kasi natin dito substituted performance okay so ibig sabihin pwedeng iba na lang ang gumawa pero ang magbe-bear pa rin ng expense ay yung original debtor yung letter C naman to undo what has been poorly done okay so um ilabas natin yung example dito so for example letter A Iruma bound himself to fix Jojo's car the following day so instead of uh, fixing the car mas lalo pang nasira Okay, so ang mangyayari, um, kailangan niyang i-undo kung ano man ang ginawa niya dun sa kotse na yun, uh, kaya mas lalong nasira, okay? So, poorly done kasi, okay? So, ibig sabihin, um, uh, hindi niya nagawa yung obligation niya talaga. So, at his expense, yung pag undo what has been poorly done. Next letter D, syempre, kung poorly done na nga, ibig sabihin, wala siyang naayos, okay? So, let's say, totally hindi niya kayang ayusin, so pwedeng iba na lang ang mag -ayos. Pero ang magbe-bear ng expenses ay yung original debtor pa rin, which is, in our example, si Iruma, okay? So, to bear the expenses of having someone else, okay, someone else, so marami tayong natatay po dito, so pasensya na. So, someone else undo what has been poorly done. So, this is found on Article 1167, Paragraph 2 as well, okay? And lastly, nandyan po yung to pay damages if guilty of fraud, negligence delay, or contraventions of the terms of the obligation. Okay? And last, okay? So, obligations in obligation not to do. So, syempre, uh, obviously, ang first obligation natin dyan is not to do what has been forbidden. Okay? Or yung hindi dapat gawin. Letter B naman, to undo what has been done. Uh, okay. To undo what has been done that is forbidden. Okay? So, um, kapag let's say, okay, meron tayong example dito, yung Cars and Wamu agreed not to build any structure on the boundaries of their property. So, let's say si Cars, anong ginawa niya, forbidden po na mag-build ng any structure on the boundaries of the properties. 
So, ang ginawa niya ay nag-build pa rin siya ng structure despite the agreement. Okay, so ang mangyayari is, meron siyang obligation to undo what has been done that is forbidden. So, uh, in case of expenses, syempre siyang magbe-bear ng expenses in undoing that uh, undoing that uh, structure na binil niya if ever. Yung letter C naman, to bear the expenses of having someone else. Okay, so some na naman. Okay, someone else undo what has been done that is forbidden. So, what if si mismong cars hindi niya kayang i-undo yung ginawa niyang structure doon. So, pwede tayong tumawag ng iba na pwedeng mag-undo or pwedeng uh, mag-demolish ng specific structure na yun doon sa boundary na yun. Pero, ang expenses, syempre, ang magbe-bear pa rin ay si original debtor which is si cars. Okay? And lastly, syempre, to pay damages if guilty of fraud, negligence. Okay? So, pres inuulit ko po, present po yan lahat yung yung dulo nating ano yung dulo nating obligation sa kahit anong klasing obligation na nabanggit natin kanina okay so next let's go to the rights and remedies of the creditor so uh, if we recall uh, hinatim po natin siya into two so we have the principal rights slash remedies and pangalawa is yung subsidiary rights slash remedies okay so sa number one we have Uh, six. So, number one is to ask specific performance. And uh, asking specific performance ay uh, ano lang, uh, kumbaga present lang sa obligation to give a specific thing. Dahil nga dun sa word na specific performance. Okay? Uh, hindi po pwedeng exercise yung right na specific performance in any other type of obligation. Aside from the obligation to give a specific thing. Yung to us performance and to us substituted performance naman, pwede siyang e-exercise in obligation to give generic thing and obligation to do. Pag sinabi natin to us performance, simply to us the performance. Okay, so if the debtor has the obligation to give a generic thing, so simply ask the debtor to deliver that specific, uh, that generic thing. And pag sinabi naman nating substituted performance, ito naman yung ano, um, what if hindi kaya ng original debtor, hindi na kaya ng original debtor na i-perform uh, yung kanyang obligation. Okay, so we will ask someone else to do the obligation, but okay, the expenses will be ano, uh, the original debtor will bear the expenses, okay? So yun po yung substituted performance na ito tinutukoy po natin dyan. At yan po ay present in obligation to give generic thing and obligation to do. Yung as damages naman, so inuulit ko, yung kanina, di ba, nung nilatag natin yung mga different obligations, so laging nandun sa dulo, uh, if guilty of fraud, ganito, bla bla bla, um, kailangan pong magbayad siya ng damages. Okay, so letter D, as damages, which is, a, which is a right of the creditor, is present in all obligations. Okay. Yung letter E po naman, uh, rescission, this is uh, present in specific scenarios only. So, yan, uh, i-discuss natin yan in the future, yung mga specific scenarios na yun. So, for now, huwag nyo muna masyadong isipin. Okay? Um, pero pagdating na natin ng contract, okay, itong rescission na to, um, medyo hindi siya magiging principal remedy or right, magiging subsidiary remedy lang. Okay? Pero... Uh, wag nyo munang isipin for now. So, for now, isa siyang principal right slash remedies. And lastly, attachment and execution of the debtor's property, uh, this is usually the last remedy. Kung hindi po, uh, kumbaga, hindi po nasatisfy yung claims or yung rights ng creditors uh, dun sa mga nauna nating binanggit, which is from from letters A to E, um, ito po yung letter F, ito, ito po yung gagawin, which is... Um, yung property na mismo ni debtor ang ating parang kumbaga uh, uh, parang kumbaga ang daw dito um, e, dudulog sa korte na parang kumbaga yun yung magiging pambayad pero hindi naman specifically pambayad talaga um, ang proseso po dito is actually meron po tayong parang dalawang proseso which is attach, attachment and execution so pupunta tayo sa korte and then um, yung korte uh, Uh, parang kumbaga if merong available na property si debtor uh, i-order nung court na yung specific property na yun ng debtor ay uh, ibebenta sa third person at kung once na benta yun yung proceeds 
Okay, or yung makokolekta natin na napagbentahan dun sa property na yun, yun yung i-apply dun sa utang if ever. Okay? So, yun yung attachment and execution. Okay? So, next, subsidiary remedies of the creditor naman. So, okay, so number 2 po yan. Number 2, subsidiary rights slash remedies. So, we have, for now, we have 2. Okay? So, although maraming different subsidiary remedies, pero we focus on 2 only. Okay, pag sinabi natin subsidiary remedy kasi, or rights, um, hindi mo pwedeng i-exercise tong mga to unless in-exercise mo na yung mga principal rights or remedies natin. Okay, so hin inulit ko, hindi mo pwedeng i-exercise tong mga to hanggat hindi mo na-exercise yung uh, mga principal uh, rights or remedies natin. So, okay, so as an example, uh, para ma-illustrate yung letter A and letter B, which is action subrogatoria and action Poliana, we have an example. So, X borrowed from Y 1 million pesos. Uh, on the due date, uh, X failed to pay despite the demands of Y. Y also exhausted all his principal rights. Okay, so, importante po yan para may exercise po yung uh, subsidiary rights natin. So, suppose X has a receivable from Z amounting to 500,000 and another receivable from W amounting to 500,000. Okay, so, ganito. Uh, pag sinabi natin action suburgatoria, si creditor po natin uh, dahil hindi nga siya makasingil um, bibigyan siya ng right na i-exercise yung mga rights nung debtor so by the way sino ba ulit si debtor si ang debtor ay si X remember si X ang debtor at si Y naman ang creditor okay so si Y bibigyan siya ng right na i-exercise yung mga different rights ni X so ano nga ba yung mga different rights ni X so nabanggit dito suppose X has a receivable from Z so, pasensya na, medyo hindi po maganda yung surface ng mouse. Okay, so, ayan. Um, Z, amounting to 500,000 and another receivable from W, amounting to 500,000. So, all in all, si X pala ay meron, pang siyang, meron pa siyang receivable na 1 million in total. So, pwede niyang singilin yun from Z and from W. Okay, so yung right na yun ni X ay mapupunta na kay Y. Okay? Uh, due to action subrogatoria. So, Sa action, action subrogatoria, lahat ng rights ng debtor mapupunta kay creditor, which is si Y. So, si Y, pwede na siya na yung directly maningil kay Z and kay W, which is 500,000. So, sakto. So, masasatisfy yung uh, obligation ni X kay Y, which is 1 million pesos. Okay? So, next naman yung action polyana. So, sinabi dito, to impugn contracts that were entered to defraud the creditor. So, Let's say, assuming, um, uh, ang ginagawa, ang ginawa ni Z, uh, ni X pala, by the way, um, instead of, uh, okay, so, ang ginawa ni X, um, kinokondon niya yung utang ni Z and W. Okay? So, pag sinabi natin kinokondon, parang kung baga pinapatawad niya or hindi niya na sinisingil, which is, um, kung iisipin mo, magiging ano yun, magiging, uh, parang kung baga hindi maganda yung uh, maganda yung magiging effect doon sa doon kay Y kasi uh, si Y hindi na makakasingil totally dahil yun na lang ang natu natitirang ano uh, ari-arian ni X which is to uh, collect a receivable from from Z and from W so in that case yung ginagawang ano yung ginagawang um, what do you call this yung condonation pwedeng impugn so by the way condonation uh, is uh, is basically a uh, donation. Uh, parang kumbaga, dinodonate mo yung ano, existing liability. So, um, parang kumbaga, pag sinabi natin donation, it is still a contract. Okay? So, that contract can be impugned by Y. Uh, through action polyana, yung isang isang subsidiary right niya. So, uh, ang ginagawa ng action polyana, pwede niyang impugn or pwede niyang irisind. Pag sinabi kong irisind, parang kumbaga, uh, ipawalang bisa. Okay, yung mga kontrata that were entered to defraud the creditor. Okay, so in this case, kung ano man ang kontrata na, na pasukan ni X and Z and W, which is uh, uh, specifically contract of donation, pwede yung mapawalang bisa ni Y through action polyana. Okay, so in that case, okay, kapag na-exercise yung action polyana, Okay, in return, pwede na siya ulit makapag-exercise ng right of action subrogatoria or exercise all the rights of the debtor. Okay? So, next, 
Okay, so let's go down to the last part. So, different types of breaches in obligation. So, puntahan natin ang Civil Code Article 1170. Those who in the performance of their obligations are guilty of fraud, negligence, or delay, and those who in any manner contravene the tenor thereof are liable for damages. So, ito yung apat na types ng breaches natin in in obligation. So, number one, fraud. Number two, negligence. Number three, delay. And number four, Contra, uh, contravention of the tenor of the obligation. Okay? So, let's start with fraud. So, pag sinabi natin fraud kasi, uh, actually, there is intent. Okay? Pero, before that, okay, before we dig in, actually, uh, uh, mas magig, uh, kumbaga, uh, i-discuss na natin in detail itong fraud on the next, uh, on the next video na lang. Okay? So, for now, we will, ano, we will uh, discuss the overview. So, in fraud, there are two types of fraud. We have causal fraud or dolo cosante and incidental fraud which is uh, dolo incidente. So, pag sinabi natin causal fraud, this is the fraud employed in obtaining consent. While in incidental fraud, this is the fraud uh, employed in the performance of the obligation. So, kanina, yung sinasabi natin different types of breaches, ang tinutukoy po nating fraud doon, so balikan natin yung slide na yun, ang tinutukoy po dyan are guilty of fraud are guilty of fraud. Ang tinutukoy po diyang fraud is yung pangalawang fraud, which is incidental fraud. Okay? Ah, uh, yung causal fraud po, yan po yung fraud na tinutukoy naman pagdating natin sa contracts, okay? Pero take note, um take note, there are also incidental fraud uh, in obtaining consent, okay? So saka na lang natin yan ah uh, uh, tatalakayin pagdating natin sa contracts. Okay. So, as an example, okay, so, ang example ng number 2, yung incidental fraud or fraud in the performance of the obligation. So, ito, meron tayong example. So, you, you oblige yourself to deliver 100 kg of premium sugar. The sugar is ready, but before actual delivery, so, anong ginawa mo? You decided to mix 50 kg of low quality sugar in order to cut costs. So, yung ginawa mong fraud ay uh, malinaw na malinaw na isa siyang fraud in the performance of the obligation. Dahil ginawa mo na lang ito uh, after, okay? After na ng kontrata, uh, kumbaga, ginawa mo na lang ito habang pineperform mo na yung obligation mo. Okay? So, this is incidental fraud or the per fraud in, perform uh, in the performance of the obligation. So, next naman, punta tayo sa negligence. Okay? So, okay. Uh, ayan, neg negligence. So, in negligence, we have uh, three. Three types of negligence. So, culpa akiliana, um, number two, culpa contractual, and number three, culpa criminal. So, pag sinabi nating negligence, unlike fraud, pag sinabi kasi nating fraud, intentional yan eh. Pag sinabi naman nating negligence, um, kumbaga, nagkulang ka lang sa uh, diligence required. Okay? Kumbaga, nagkaroon ng kapabayaan. Okay? So, 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 meron tayong tatlong uh, uri. Kulpa akiliana, kulpa contractual, kulpa criminal. So, uh, yung kulpa akiliana, kapag nagkaroon ka ng kapabayaan, let's say sa isang uh, accident, okay? Sa isang vehicular accident, um, at tawag dito, um, uh, okay, so, nagkaroon ng vehicular accident, ang mangyayari is, um, kapag uh, wala namang namatay. So, wala namang problema yan. Hindi pa tayo papasok sa culpa criminal. Kasi pag may namatay, uh, usually, automatically, nagkakaroon ng culpa criminal. Okay? Pero, dun muna tayo sa, let's say, ano lang, minor injuries. So, meron kang dinadrive na motorcycle, tapos biglang, may biglang tumawid na, na let's say, uh, bata. So, nahagip mo, tapos, uh, simple gas-gas lang naman. So, uh, in that case, uh, Isa lang apang po yung kulpa akiliana or isang obligation, meron kang obligation to answer for uh, the ano physical injuries na natamunong ano, uh, natamunong specific uh, person na yun. Uh, at ang source ng obligation mo ay yung mismong negligence or yung uh, kumbaga quasi delict. Pagbalikan pagbabalikan natin yung different sources of obligation natin, quasi delict lang po yun pag sinabi natin quasi uh, kulpa akiliana. Pero pagdating naman sa kulpa contractual uh, meron pong kontrata na naka uh, pinagbabasehan. So, for example, ganito. Um, uh, sa isang school, um, 
let's say yung isang school uh, walang gwardiya, walang masyadong walang bakod yung school so kahit sinong tao pwedeng pumasok and then one day isa sa mga estudyante uh, napagtripan ng isang outsider okay so dahil nga ano dahil nga ano anong anong naging ano anong naging reason kung bakit uh, napagtripan or parang kumbaga okay by the way napagtripan siya sa loob mismo ng school okay so sa within the school premise okay so In that case, merong kapabayaan doon yung school. Which is, parang kumbaga, hindi siya nag-invest sa security ng mga students. Which is, um, dapat, naka, syempre, uh, nakalagay yun sa kontrata between uh, schools and students na uh, yung, uh, yung mga schools, parang kumbaga, bibigyan nila, yung mga sudyante nila, ng parang kumbaga, um, uh, proper uh, learning environment. Okay, at syempre, uh, obviously, yung ganong klasing insidente, hindi po yun uh, nagre-reflect ng isang ano, uh, proper learning environment dahil yun nga, kulang sa security. Um, so, so ayun. Um, kumbaga, nagkulang, okay, nagkaroon ng negligence sa part ng school, okay, pero yung negligence na yun ay nag-result into, sa, into tinatawag nating breach of contract. So, kumbaga, dun sa contract na yun, sa kontrata nila between student and the school, parang kumbaga, meron doong dapat papangalagaan mo yung welfare ng mga students pero um, uh, the school failed okay to comply with that specific obligation so that specific uh, negligence or kapabayaan ay number two lamang kulpa contractual so so ang parang kumbaga pinaka reason okay uh, kung bakit magkakaroon ng claim yung specific student na yun from the school ay hindi dahil doon sa mismong negligence Okay? Negligence nung specific school. Kundi dahil dun sa breach of contract. Or yung hindi nila sinunod kung ano yung nasa kontrata between uh, schools and students. Okay? And number three naman ay culpa criminal. So in this case, yung sinasabi ko kanina, so extend natin yung example natin kanina sa vehicular accident. Um, so, if ever may namatay, so, uh, medyo ano na yun, um, ibang usapan na yun. So bakit nga ba namatay? It's either sobrang bilis kasi or biglang tumawid, mga ganun. So pero nevertheless may namatay. Okay? And usually um magfo-fall 'yon under culpa criminal. So yung magiging obligation ng driver ay mag arise from delic. Okay? Delic as a source of obligation. Okay? So uh, let's say regardless kung may namatay, um let's say yung ano natin um uh, yung tawag dito yung driver natin ay isang reckless driver parang kumbaga uh, hindi sumusunod sa traffic rules hindi oh, kumbaga nagda-drive nang nakainom ang bilis-bilis magpatakbo so that is reckless driving so uh, uh, generally magfo-fall pa rin yun under culpa criminal regardless of death of the um, kung sino man ang ano mababangga or ano di ba okay so kumbaga pa uh, parang i believe uh, yung mga naririnig ko sa ano ito yung ano reckless imprudence resulting to physical injuries parang ganun so uh, magfo-fall pa rin yun under ano culpa criminal okay so kumbaga ano eh medyo um uh, medyo thin line yung ano eh yung pagkakaiba nung sa ano eh, sa uh, culpa akilyana culpa criminal okay uh, pero siguro nasa ano na lang yan yung degree okay degree nung ginawang kapabayaan okay Uh, kapag simpleng kapabayan lang naman, for example, um, sumusunod naman sa mga traffic rules and regulations and then uh, nasa tama din naman yung bilis pero wala talaga eh. Hindi mo naiwasan yung biglang tumawid na bata, for example. So, so siguro may kapabayan ka pa rin dun, which is yung um, hindi pagiging vigilant dun sa surroundings mo. So lagi mong titignan. So kahit na ang luwang-luwang ng kasada, Lagi mo lang pa rin i-assume na may biglang tatawid dyan or whatsoever. So, siguro, uh, konting negligence lang naman yun. So, cool pa akilya na lang yun. Okay? So, yun yung mga different types of negligence. Okay? And, next, delay. Okay? Delay. So, mora solvendi, mora accependi, and compensation mori. So, pag sinabi natin mora solvendi, uh, delay on the part of the debtor, mora accependi, delay of creditor and lastly compensation mori the delay of both creditor and debtor so uh, sa number 3 uh, effectively wala pong delay diyan okay so ayan yung mga different types of delay po natin okay 
uh, actually, um, kailan ba nagkakaroon ng delay? Okay? Magkakaroon lang po ng delay kapag merong demand, okay? Pero yung ano, concept na 'yan, further ma-discuss natin 'yan dun sa susunod na video, okay? So, yung pang-apat by the way, which is the contravention of the terms of the obligation, um ano na lang 'yan. Um sa second video na, na, na rin siya ulit. Pero tatandaan niyo lang, uh, yung contravention of the terms um kapag hindi siya nag-fall dun sa first three Uh, breaches natin, which is fraud, negligence, and delay, uh, dyan siya nagpo-fall sa contravention of the terms of the obligation. Okay? So, dito muna tayo mag-e-end, guys. So, this is the end of the Nature and Effects of Obligations Part 1. So, be sure to subscribe to our channel to alert you on the release of the up of upcoming videos. So, uh, hopefully, tuloy-tuloy na tayo makapag-upload. So, siguro bukas, uh, may, uh, magagawa na rin natin yung Part 2 para hindi tayo nabibitin. Okay? So, Okay, hindi natin na uh, na edit yung ano yung taas pala ng ano. Okay, so general provisions part 2 pa rin siya. Okay. So uh, next time we will be vigilant when it comes to that. Okay? So ayan. Um so uh, again, guys, um to test yourself, uh, you can sign up on the link below. So it's free. Uh, meron tayong naka mga Uh, questions, uh, nandiyan na rin yung mga answers after nyong masagutan, so para matest nyo if meron nga ba kayong natutunan dito sa uh, video na ito and wag nyo rin pong kakalimutan mag-comment uh, para sa mga suggestions or recommendations or any violent reaction if ever may mali man tayong na ituro dito sa video na ito, so um, wag po kayong mahihiyang mag-comment uh, so ina-accept po natin lahat ng comment, whether positive or negative po yan okay, so ayan po um, uh, So, coming up next, Law and Obligations, Nature and Effects of Obligations, Part 2. So, see you and goodbye.